cabinet colleagues, Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Sean Richards, our Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Lindsay Grant, Minister of Agriculture, the Honorable Jean Hamilton, our Senator, the Honorable Wendy Phipps, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Ambassadors Archburn and Powell, senior officers of the government, and a particular welcome those from our security forces, our fellow citizens, representatives of the media, greetings. I want to welcome you to another press conference being hosted by the Office of the Prime Minister. And today I wish to share with you some important national updates in keeping with my government's strong practice of good governance and accountability. I am happy to report to you that something good is happening in St. Kitts and Nevis. And indeed, some very good things are happening in our beautiful country. You take, for example, that the SL Horsford and Company Limited recently reported that the financial year 2016 was its best performing year in its 143-year history, starting way back in 1875. As a former employee of SL Horsford and Company Limited, and as a customer, I feel a sense of tremendous elation and satisfaction that one of our largest publicly traded companies could report its best performance ever in over 140 years. This historic achievement means a lot to my government. We support all businesses, but we have a special yearning to ensure local businesses succeed. We love local businesses, from the Photoshop to the car rental to the supermarkets. We promise a prosperity agenda. And during the last two years of our stewardship, the country has been well managed, evidenced by a growing economy year after year, rather than one that is contracting. Our country must feel good when SL Horsford Group can report such a superlative performance. This means that jobs for its 407 employees are secure. This means greater dividends for its shareholders on record. This means greater corporate taxes, etc. Evidence of these, of course, is shown on the financial highlights of the company's annual report. And these, of course, are found on page 7. And if you look closely enough, I don't know why they chose orange incidentally for 2017, but you would note that this is higher than all other years of its performance reported. The chairman of the company, Mr. Anthony Kulksik, reported in the annual report, and I want to just quote some excerpts from that report. He said, in the report, the results for 2016 have been very satisfactory as profitability continued on its good trend, resulting in the highest profit ever achieved. Turnover for the group sales for 2016 was at its highest at $158 million dollars this was the highest sales reported in the history of the company. This improvement, which reflects the continued strength in our economy, was experienced in all our primary operations on both St. Kitts and Nevis. Now, this is a quote coming from Mr. Anthony. This is not me. But I want to repeat for emphasis, the chairman is saying that this improvement which reflects the continued strength, not weakness, strength in our economy, was experienced in all, not some, 
of our primary operations in both St. Kitts and Nevis. The gross profit increased by over 3 million, or 9% over the prior period, to reach $39.8 million. And the chairman end with this important note. The outlook for 2017 is for similar results as experienced in 2016, as economic growth is expected to continue on its current path. End of quote. I want to congratulate the management and staff of SL Horsford Group of Companies on this historic superlative performance. But it's not just SL Horsford Group which is reporting exceptional results. I want to turn to National Bank because that has also been in the news. And there, the National Bank Group of Companies is recorded in 2016 as one of its best years and record. Indeed, the National Bank Group has recorded the best normal operating profit of 28.4 million being realized in its operation for the financial year ended in 2016. This represents over 10 percent over the comparative period for the financial year in 2015. Indeed, for the last five years, the National Bank Group recorded the following profits. In 2016, the best year, 28.4 million. In 2015, 25.8 million. In 2014, 25.3 million. In 2013, 22 million. In 2012, 14 million. National Bank's group, best two years, 25.8 million. In 2015, 28.4 in 2016. So something good is happening. Our National Bank group of companies is in good hands. A successful bank means secure jobs and a stable financial system. An interim dividend of 5% equating to about $6.75 million was paid out last Friday to shareholders on record, numbering 3,622. So a large number of persons have interests in the National Bank Group. And it is expected that the final dividend will be announced at the bank's AGF, which I understand should be around April 27, 2017. Incidentally, the Bank of Nova Scotia and our Federation also recorded its best financial year in 2016. Bank of Nova Scotia. It also received commendation in the London-based Financial Times publication called the Banker Magazine. And this is historic. For the first time, the Bank of Nova Scotia in St. Kitts is not only getting regional acclaim, but it has received international acclaim by the Banker's Magazine. The Banker Magazine, I am advised, selects winners based on their ability to deliver shareholder value and to gain strategic value. I want, on behalf of the government and all the customers of the bank, to congratulate Dave Ramsomere and his employees for a job well done. Last Friday, I met with the managing director of Rams Trading, Mr. Sean Weston, and was updated on several developments taking place in our country, of course, by the Rams Group. And I was pleased to learn from him that the 2016 accounts being finalized are showing that 2016 will be the best year for Rams in its 82-year history in our Federation. Something good is happening. For that I said to God, 
with the glory. Rams, of course, have an employee base of just about 700 people. Again, as I did before, I want to congratulate Mr. Weston, his management team and employees at the Rams Group. After the death of the late great business icon, some wondered with a bone, the Rams Group. Mr. Weston has shown his incisive business acumen and that he and his team are worthy recipients of the button passed by Mr. Kishu. I commend them on several projects which he advised are now being completed or, or are being pursued that will expand their portfolio and the asset base of the Rams Group. And by extension, these will result in added dynamism and job growth in our country. What are some of these positive developments associated with the Rams Group to the extent that I can share? A new supermarket is to be opened up in the next week or latest in the next two weeks in West Barstair. And you must see the hurried pace of activity as they attempt to meet a next week opening. What impressed me there was not just the physical facility and the millions of dollars expended there, just under 10 million or thereabout, was that 80 additional jobs will become available in that facility. That is work, real work for real people. The Sugar Bay Hotel, he advised, is undergoing significant renovations, reflecting their group's confidence in tourism, in St. Kitts and Nevis, and in government's facilitative policies and programs. A new facility is to be built. All these are happening this year in Kayon area. This means jobs during construction and jobs upon completion. Of course, the additional services that will be provided will add to the convenience of the people in that community. Our people will be better off for this. And the more we have diversification of activities from city into the rural parts, the better it is for all in the country. What is clear from this is that rational economic actors are choosing St. Kitts and Nevis as the best place to do business. Since December 2014, when our GDP stood at $2.2 billion, real GDP grew by approximately 5% in December 2015 and another 3 plus percent at the end of December 2016. The size of our economy grew from 2.3 billion in 2014 to 24.4 billion for an increase of about 6% over 2014. The country then is not going backwards. The country is moving forward. The country is progressing. The country is enlarging the economic opportunities and incomes for all the people in St. Kitts and Nevis. It is, none would dare say, an amazing achievement, well, none will dare contradict, when across the financial services sector, exemplified by the best ever performance by the Bank of Nova Scotia here, and the best ever performance by the National Bank, when across those sectors, and the diversified portfolio of the SL Horsford Group, across all that they have, retail and wholesale, cars and tricking, and you go on and on, you know them better than me, insurance, superlative performances are being reported. This is strong evidence of the considerable good health of our economy and the high confidence that businesses have repose in my government and in the overall investment climate. Team Unity has presided over an enlarged economic pie. Each in time will get a fair share. 
We are moving forward. Progress is being made. And again, I give God thanks for these significant accomplishments in such a short period of time. With respect to our public debt, which we inherited at $1.8 billion at December 31st, 2014, we slashed that to $1.5 billion by the 31st of December 2016 for a reduction in the public debt by over $228 million, or a whopping 13% reduction in the public debt over the last two years. This significant reduction was occasioned in part by our surpluses that allowed us to expedite the payoff of the IMF debt, and you would recall that the past government contracted a debt of some $228 million with the IMF. We came in and we wiped $117 million of that indebtedness from the books, bringing an end to what had been a disastrous experiment in mismanagement. Because for the first time in the memory of our country, post-independence, we had to go a begging to the IMF for bailout. And we thought that this did not reflect well on the country. And as part of the promise never again to go there, we expedited the payoff of that indebtedness. And in a manner of speaking, set ourselves a higher bar. The past, sordid as it was, from which we came, we shall not go back there. Few countries in the region and around the world can boast of our record of fiscal prudence. Trinidad and Tobago, it is well known, is going through hard times. St. Lucia, Prime Minister, admits to its financial challenges, at least from the regional media reports. Barbados, it is well known, is going through a rough patch. Indeed, just a few weeks ago, the private sector indicated, by and large, that it was distancing itself from any form of government security, treasury bill or whatever. They wanted, as it were, to distance themselves from that. People all over the region are hurting. In St. Kitts and Nevis, we are blessed with a team unity government that knows how to run our country. And I am pleased as Minister of Finance and Prime Minister to say that our fiscal house is in order. And for this, we give thanks. Moving from the microanalysis of the economy to, from firms to the larger economy, I still have further good news to report. Job creation in 2016 was at the highest ever in the records of the Social Security Board. While the number of jobs remained relatively constant in 2015 versus 2014, in 2016 we outdid all preceding years with an average of about 24,773 jobs monthly. Some months should have been higher, some months could have been lower. We're talking monthly average. Just about 25,000 people being put to work in a small country such as St. Kitts and Nevis. Something good is indeed happening. And the facts which I've outlined are speaking eloquently for themselves. Not surprising and congruent with more persons at work, the monthly wage bill, as reported by Social Security, stood at its highest, I want to repeat it, it stood at its highest monthly average of just over $77 million in wages being pumped into this economy every month. The total earnings for 2016, being reported by Social Security, has been put at about $995 million. That is what wages, that is what the earnings 
reported to Social Security reflects. Something awesomely awesome is happening. The facts speak for themselves. Look how far we have come when in 2014 the earnings were about 800 plus million and in two years time we are just under one billion dollars in earnings. Based on the comparison of the 2016 and 2015 data, the distribution of employees earning minimum wage or less has shifted positively as a lower portion of employees now earn in that vulnerable category. That is, the earning data show that a higher portion of employees are earning above the minimum category when you compare 2016 to 2015 and vis-a-vis -vis any other year. Indeed, over the period 2015 to 2016, I am pleased to report that we had fewer persons and minimum wages. In fact, 10 percent less than in 2015. And this is significant. You are moving people from the very low, from the bottom, to higher categories of earning. And at the extreme end, that would include largely persons in the private sector. The inverse was awesome also, in that there was an increase of 18% in the number of persons finding themselves in the highest earning category. All earning categories above the minimum wage save one. Some more persons participating. In some then, more persons were doing better to the extent that we can adduce that objectively from the earnings. The preliminary data indicate that over the 16-year period, 2001 to 2016, employee rep res registration representing entrance in the world of work was at the record highest at 1970, up from 1655 during the first year of Team Unity, and certainly way above the 1475 recorded in 2014. Something good is happening. And we are here today celebrating, if you will, work and its positive impact on our people. We are happy that more persons are gainfully employed. But the records from Social Security are showing better than that. Not only are they gainfully employed, but a large number of them are earning more, are earning beyond minimum, which is what we want if we are to realize the prosperity agenda. I want to speak to another important initiative, and that is our Fresh Start program, which we introduce early in the life of our administration to ensure that small business people can get some support, some wherewithal to assist them in moving forward. The records to date reflect that 507 loans were approved in this program and this amounts to 40 million dollars. Of this sum, 34 million has already been dispersed. So you're having a fast payout ratio. 507 businesses have gotten a first start and life and their viability to this important program. I have repeatedly said that the prosperity agenda could not be completely realized unless we have a safe and secure country. And yesterday I was very pleased to have participated in a special march, if you will, an anti-crime march by hundreds, if not thousands, of young persons from St. Kitts. And I gather on Thursday a similar exercise is expected to take place in Nevis. Young people in the main 
are the major victims from criminal activities. And we see this reflected in the statistics at our prisons. We see that reflected in the number of young people who lose at their one. And so if we could start early, as we are doing in our primary schools and secondary schools, to inculcate in our young people the need always to stop and think before they proceed, to engage in illicit or criminal activities, we will be doing quite a bit to ensure the generation after us harvest a country which we can proudly acclaim is the safest country in the world. On that note, I want to commend Permanent Secretary Mr. Osmond Petty, Mr. Neil Triton, and the High Command of the Police, not only for their strong support for that initiative, but for their performance to date. Home is age, you are well aware, for the first quarter of the year, January to March 2017, fell from nine in 2016, six in 2017. While it's not where we want it, ideally, we must remark that we have achieved a 33% reduction, and that is significant in terms of where it's trending. Importantly, in 2016, all of the homicides were of a gun-related nature. For, 20, for the first quarter, of those six in 2017, four were gun-related. So we are seeing again a reduction in gun-related homicides. And as I repeat before, we are not at the ideal situation of zero homicides. But what is important, because we know it will take time to get there, if we ever do, what is important is that we are trending in the right direction. I therefore want to commend the High Command and all the law enforcement, because it's not just the police, it is the custom, it is customs department, it is the defense force that are working collaboratively to ensure the peace and good order in St. Kitts and Nevis. And I hope that the second quarter will see an improvement relative to last year, and this positive trending can continue. At the last press conference, we outlined quite a number of initiatives that have been undertaken by the government, including the CCTV project. Since that time, we have had the second shipment of equipment and appliances, and we are therefore moving further towards the actualizing of the CCTV program. Last time I reported our efforts to improve upon the manpower availability to law enforcement, I could report now that 29 new recruits are now enlisted with our defense force. And I am advised that 34 are now in the police training school. We expect before year end another 30 to be enlisted into the defense force. So they will, in fact, go perhaps to another 60. And I expect that the police also will be doing a second batch. So in the course of 2017, we are going to bring over 100 new persons in the service of law enforcement, giving them a stake in the peace order and good governance of their country. We should see then, as a result of this, assuming Mr. Brandy is appropriately deploying the resources, more men on our streets and in our alleyways, both in uniform and I advise some should also be there as undercover officers. I am happy to report that the Defense Board, long dormant for many years, has now been resurrected and has been put to work. Defense Board is the mechanism available for treat, to treat with human resource issues at our Defense Force. It is a four-member board 
which comprises the Prime Minister and Minister of National Security. In this case, there's a dual cap, the Attorney General, the Permanent Secretary in National Security is by law the Secretary to the Board. The Commander of the Defense Force is also a member. And we have been meeting to deal with a number of personal issues. We want, therefore, to say to those who have large complaints to assure them that we are following due process to bring requisite resolution. Another important initiative which we spoke about, we promised the country a second high court, and this goes to the heart of law and order and our democracy, and a second judge to serve our circuit. We have now delivered and both, and for this I want to thank the Chief Justice, the Honorable Dame Janice Pereira, for working with us to ensure we could deliver this so soon in 2017. The second High Court is now served by the Honorable Justice Pauletta Lanz, who hails from the Federation. We welcome her and we wish her well in this high office. We will now have continuous sitting relating to criminal matters all year long, and similarly, we will have continuous hearing of civil matters. This should lead to a significant diminution in the backlog of cases. Justice then will be more swiftly um, obtained in St. Kitts and Nevis. And this is good for the country, it is good for business, it is good for the citizens that the long delays are not part of our judicial system. Justice delayed, justice denied. I want to turn to one other matter under the broad rubric of law and order, public safety and security. And that has to do with the establishment of a marijuana commission. Marijuana is the most commonly used illicit, psychoactive, psychoactive substance which is used by about 4% of the world's population. Its use, for the record, is illegal in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. It is also illegal under federal law in the United States and indeed in most countries of the world. In 1961, the United Nations Single Convention on Narcotics Drugs, now I think referred to as the Psychotropic Substance Convention, marijuana therein is described as a Schedule I in 1961, and I gather it's now um, updated to a Schedule II drug. That is, it is considered one of the most serious drugs in the world. That is by the UN body. The categories go from one to four. One and two, then, are the two most serious and restrictive classifications with respect to drugs. The UN revised it from the most serious at Schedule I to now Schedule II. And I gather it is in the same category as opium, coca, and their derivatives, heroin, and cocaine. The way forward regarding marijuana has been raised in the public domain from time to time. And in keeping with our consultative approach to government, the Cabinet on Monday agreed to the establishment of a national commission on marijuana. This would, of course, lead to the fulfillment of the promise we gave at our town hall meeting when the matter was raised, particularly in East Basti and then I think in number four at Challengers on the way forward for this, and it was also raised on one program I was on at Win with Nital. So that matter now is before the National Commission, and the objective is to facilitate national engagement on the issues surrounding the production and use of marijuana in St. Kitts and Nevis. A broad-based National Commission would lead the national engagement on this very controversial subject. We wish that the Commission would conduct or utilize research to guide 
an exhaustive consultation both in St. Kitts and in Nevis on the subject matter and make recommendations for the Cabinet. I expect a vigorous inquiry into the social, the economic, the health and legal issues surrounding marijuana production and use in St. Kitts and Nevis as a precursor to a determination and the current classification of marijuana. So we are not rushing. We are saying that this is a serious matter, has always been so. 100 and about 80 plus members of the 193 United Nations body has signed on on this convention, which means the majority, 180 plus of 193 member states of the UN, have agreed with the classification of this drug, firstly as a Schedule 1 and now as a Schedule 2 drugs. So we are part of a responsible international community. I have the honor to report that the Cabinet has stopped Dr. Hazel Laws, our Chief Medical Officer, to chair this commission, and I'm delighted that she is here and bid her welcome. The other members of the commission will be named publicly after discussions are completed with the rest of the team. Membership, of course, is expected to be drawn into alia from education, from health, from law enforcement, banking association, religious bodies, the Rastafarians, the young people, among other, pe of course, stakeholder groups, the media, and so the like. St. Kitts and Nevis, in my view, must determine to thoughtful reflection the kind of society it wants and what fashions and developments it wishes to emulate. We await the outcomes of the consultation on this matter, which will have far-reaching implications for our health system, our judicial system, our international reputation and perception, and our financial system, as banks can be penalized and are being penalized if we are to draw on the Jamaican experience, as has been reported to us, if they accept clients who they know are trading now in marijuana. And this follows naturally from the dangerous um, Drugs Act, which has been passed in many countries, and it is a natural follow-on from the classification at the UN to which so many countries have become party. So this is where we go in relation to that. We will approach the matter thoughtfully with sensibility and sensitivity. And I believe Dr. Laws is eminently qualified to lead the consultative process. I therefore want on behalf of the cabinet to extend our very best wishes to you, Dr. Laws, and your team. I have every expectation that as a proud citizen, you will make our country proud. I have endeavored by and large to give in this press conference an update on the economic landscape with insertion, if you will, into the public safety and security arena. Clearly from what I've reported, many good things are happening in our country. Notwithstanding the good news, this government will not sit on its laurels, but will make an even greater effort to ensure the promised prosperity for all is being realized through real growth in our economy and through people's empowerment. Again, the point about the growth is not that it is an end in itself, but it is a mechanism for people's empowerment, it is a mechanism for providing the resources that we need to deal with our multiple challenges and to create even more opportunities for our young people. Our people, in particular, our young people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Stay up to date with news, programs, and activities 
of the government with SKNIS. Like us on Facebook. Listen to us on SoundCloud. Follow us on Twitter. And watch our videos on YouTube. Connect with us today. SKNIS, St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service.